We're going to finish up chapter five with just a quick review of the binomial, Poisson, and hypergeometric distributions and when each of those should be used. So a quick recap, first of all, all three are discrete distributions. Just like the original questions that we did when we made our own probability model, those were discrete distributions, so are these. For a binomial and a Poisson distribution, the trials must be independent, but remember that hypergeometric did not have independent trials. In fact, it needed to be dependent. A fixed number of trials is the binomial and the hypergeometric, which is why a lot of people get those two confused, um, whereas Poisson does not have a fixed number of trials. And then just a little description for each, for when each should be used. So here are three situations for us. I would like for you to press pause and read through each of these. And when you are ready, we are going to talk about which distribution is correct for each of these different situations. For my first question, based on data from an online search provider, a new company believes that the website is viewed 1500 times per week. What is the probability that in the next four weeks, the company's website will be viewed more than 5,000 times? So in this case, remember that I'm looking for, I'm given trials where successes occur in a given interval. This is where we talked about finding Lambda. Lambda is the average in a given period of time. So based on data, the new company believes that his website is viewed 1,500 times per week. And now we're talking about the next four weeks. So lambda would be 6,000. So this is going to be a Poisson distribution. Lambda would be 6,000. And of course, X would be 5,000. And we're looking at more than 5,000 times. So it would be cumulative. For B, assume the proportions of boys and girls born in Cincinnati, Ohio, have remained constant for the last few years, and that 48% of babies born in Cincinnati, Ohio are girls. So what is the probability that of the next 250 babies that are born, no more than 100 of them are girls? So the big question here is, obviously we're not dealing with a mean, so this is not a Poisson distribution. It's binomial or it's hypergeometric. So the big question between the two, do we have independent trials or do we have dependent trials? Well, if you keep in mind that every baby that's born has theoretically a 50-50 shot of being a boy or a girl, and whether or not I have one boy doesn't affect if I have another boy, or if I have one girl doesn't affect if I have another girl. So these are independent trials, so this would be a binomial distribution. Now, what kind of values did we find for a binomial distribution? We said we needed a P, and we needed an N, and we needed an X. So spoiler alert, we know that this last one's going to be hypergeometric because I told you at the beginning there was going to be one of each. But let's go ahead and talk about why it is the hypergeometric and then which values I would need to solve. So we have 500 programs printed, several contain coupons for the coffee shop. Of these coupons, 100 are $1 off and 50 are for a free latte. Assuming that the different coupons are randomly dispersed throughout the programs, what is the probability that the first 50 programs that are handed out each contain a coupon for the coffee shop? So again, a lot going on here. In fact, they even tried to make this one a little bit more complicated. Now, first of all, I'm looking at success or failure. So if I have success or failure, right away I know it's binomial or hypergeometric. And remember, the big difference between the two is whether or not the trials are independent or dependent. And here we're looking at dependent trials because if I get a program and I have a coupon, that means there's one less coupon that anybody else can get. That's why these are dependent. So I could stop right there, but let's go ahead and talk about which values that I need. So if you'll remember, I needed X and little n, and then I needed K and big N. 
and x and little n had everything to do with the sample. And so for the sample, we're saying the probability that the first 50 programs each contain a coupon. So that's 50 that I'm choosing and 50 that I hope contain a coupon. So 50 and 50. Now for n, hopefully it's pretty obvious that's 500 because there's 500 programs printed. For k, I think they were trying to trick you a little bit here because there's 100 that are a dollar off and 50 that are for a free latte. But when they ask the question at the end, they don't specify which is which. They just say, did you get a coupon or not? So there are 150 total coupons. So 150 successes out of 500, the question asks for what's the probability that I get 50 out of a sample of 50. Up next, we are going to switch gears and take a look at the last distribution and one of the most important where we're going to spend a lot of our time this term, which is the normal distribution and z-scores.